Baker. Swim dodge. Fires and scores! Skipping a step behind the back! And the extra look and the goal! Shot on goal and good! You know, it's not every day I get a chance to talk some girls across. So I get the phone call, and, I say, and I'm told, Andrew, do you want to do a little show with Tracy Weiner? And I said, there's nothing I would love more <laughs> than to talk a little girls across with Tracy Weiner. Andrew Rappaport, <laughs> Tracy Weiner here, and we just saw an unbelievable game between Wanta and St. Anthony's, and looked like St. Anthony's might, might not pull it out, and then they just came back and, and blew Wanta away. It was. It was a great game. It was very, very competitive for the whole first half. Wanto showing you that they have some potential in Nassau County women's lacrosse. But again, St. Anthony's is, is ranked where they are for a reason. All right. Let's cut to the chase. St. Anthony's and Northport are the two best teams on Long Island. Without a doubt. I'm going to say it, and whether people like it or not, it's the truth. Wanto, St. excuse me, St. Anthony's, Northport, the two best teams on the island. Unfortunately, they don't play. They don't. If they played... I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. What do you think would happen in that game? It would be goal for goal. It would be run and gun. It would be the craziest game, um, I think, of the entire lacrosse season. And it might just come down to goaltending. They are both in our Games for Brains fundraiser coming up this weekend. It is a great day of lacrosse. Saturday at St. Anthony, uh, Saturday at Cold Spring Harbor and Sunday at Mount Sinai. And here's a look at the games. And, and Northport kicks it off on Saturday against New Canaan. A great team out of Connecticut, nationally ranked Kristen Wood squad, won the FCAC championship last year, and that might be the premier matchup of the tournament. Yeah, I'm excited to do that game, as you know. I'm excited to see how Northport matches up. Um, so far, their schedule, you know, they haven't had too many tough games. They need to get to that Ward Melville game, and, and, and that'll be a great gauge of, of how they are. But, I mean, everybody that they've played so far, it, it hasn't been much of a game. All right, up next, Garden City and Suffern. Garden City started the season in kind of a surprising way because they lost to Ward Melville, and everyone's saying, well, is Garden City a little down this year? Their best player, Megan Rowe, tore ACL for the third Correct. time in four seasons, but then they rebound with a nice win over Wantall last week, taking on Rockland Power, Suffern, John Callanan's crew, once again, loaded and ready to make a run to the States. Yeah, they're going to be great. I can't wait to watch that game. I know a lot of the kids on that team. They play for our um, you know, Yellow Jacket team in that region in the Rockland area. And, and you know, Garden City is the perennial power on, on Long Island. Everybody knows who they are. You know, they, they fundamentally are always sound. And, and they always find a way to frustrate teams and pull out a win. All right, before we get to the next matchup, when you played Garden City and you were the coach of Farmondale, what, did, did you have to go into those games differently, even though you guys were you know, nationally ranked and you had some top players just like they did? Was it different playing Garden City? Without a doubt. And, you know, Chappie was the coach back then, and, and it was always, you know, Chappie and, and Wiener, and they were always joking around about it. <laughs> but the truth of the matter is, is that it was always one of the games that we had circled on our calendar. And I had a real difficult time for years beating them just because they're so fundamentally sound until you realize that you have to play your best game and then capitalize on their one or two mistakes that they make. So even though you wouldn't play them for a state championship, it was almost like a championship game. Absolutely, especially if you wanted to win the conference. You know, they were in our conference conference and there were years that I was county champion or Long Island champion and but we never we weren't a conference champion because <laughs> of Garden City. I always say never the count. girls from the garden. The garden girls from the garden. <laughs> All right then up next we have St. Anthony's who we just saw here. They are taking on Greenwich Academy, a relatively unknown but up-and-coming team in Connecticut. Everybody knows about Darianne and New Canaan, but Greenwich Academy, a solid team, but they will have their hands full with St. Anthony's. Well, they will have their hands full, but, you know, it's still going to be a great game. The difference in lacrosse between Connecticut and Long Island is always going to be the physicalness of the game, so I'm very curious to see because you see St. Anthony's can give out the physical play, they can play under physical play, but I, I just am curious to see if Connecticut can... 
you know, figure that piece of it out because this is going to be a physical game. And I will give a quick shout out to Greenwich Academy because they stepped up. Originally, it was supposed to be Ridgewood from New Jersey. They canceled late. Greenwich stepped in. So th- I said, if, you, if you're going to be in this tournament, you're going to have to play St. Anthony's. And they said, we want to play the best. There's no way to make ourselves better than playing the best. Agreed. And that's what it's about. Look, this is a fundraising tournament. This is all about, you know, the, the gains for brains and the message behind it. The wins and losses are nice, but it's more important to be a part of the, the day. And then we wrap up Saturday with the host school, Cold Spring Harbor, hosting for the sixth time. Should be the eighth year. We lost two to COVID, but for the sixth time, Cold Spring Harbor is the host, taking on Sacred Heart of Connecticut. Another good team out of Connecticut, coming off a big win over um, over Ridgewood of New Jersey. Well, that, and that is going to be a good game for Cold Spring Harbor because, again, this is a team. They're in the D school league now. You know, they don't have a lot of kids to pull from, and yet they're still competitive year in and year out. You know that I know their coach, Danielle Castellane, who played for me in high school. Candy, I'll always call her. Until me, the, me too. The day I'm dead. <laughs> um, you know, she always has the girls ready to play, and, and they're always going to be super aggressive again and, and really just – it's, it's just a great gauge for them to see where they are. And, and we've talked about nationally ranked teams, and, and Cold Spring Harbor knows what that's about because they've won plenty of, of Class C state titles Correct. before the pandemic. And, and there was talk, it didn't matter what size class they were, they were as competitive as A and B schools. So, you know, listen, yes, they're, they're, size-wise they're down in Ds this year, but for them, it doesn't matter. Their goal is the same. They have to win that state championship. Correct. And they're in the Power League as well, and they're a team that never tries to opt out of it and go to the lower conference to have a safer schedule. That's just not Danielle's style. Good, because Correct. We, we like when Cold Spring Harbor is good. All right, and then new this year for Games for Brains, instead of all the games at one place, we flip over to Mount Sinai on Sunday, try it a little different this year, and we kick it off with Saville and John Jay. Saville was in this tournament a few years ago. They, they haven't been in recently, but... We said, all right, it's time to come back because they're, you know, they're making a run and, and, and they want to get better, right? Get to that next level, get over the hump last year. They lost to Mount Sinai in the playoffs, and here they are taking on John Jay, a good team out of Westchester, also looking to make a state championship yeah, run. I think that these two teams are very similar. I think this is going to be a very one of the most competitive games, I think, of the entire tournament, to be honest with you, because I do think that they're both from the same mold if that makes sense. But I love Saville's grit, and I just love that blue-collar mentality that they bring to the field all the time. Oh, so you're saying I made good matchups by making this matchup. I think you lucked out on that (laughs) one because normally you don't make good matchups. I'm just saying. (laughs) You had some good games. You had some good games against the Brains. I did. All right, so and then after that, the 1 o'clock game, Eastport South Manor, another one of those perennial state championship teams. I think Becky's won, what, two or three? Two state championships, right? Yes. Taking on Bronxville, who was a Class D team, who who hasn't gotten over that state championship hump because they've always run into whether it's Mattituck in the D's or Mount Sinai in the C's, those Long Island teams. But, you know, they have that championship mindset and, and ESM maybe a little down this year, but still you a great team. Yeah, and I think for ESM, this is a team that they, they graduated a lot. And I think for them, this is them progressing as the season goes on. You know, Becky's trying to get her team prepared for the playoffs, understanding that they weren't going to come in. You know, they had some work to do. They definitely had some kids whose confidence needed to be boosted, and they need the team to come together. This would be a huge win for them if they can beat Bronxville. What I like about this is, and this is true for everything other than the last matchup, so we'll hold off for one second. I always try to put the teams against teams from out of the area, right? Correct. It's a good matchup, but I never put teams against each other that could play in the in the state tournament, right? I always match up Correct. A's against B's or, you know, Jersey against – because I don't want to give any team an unfair advantage should you see in the state tournament, but, you know, a, an ESM versus Bronxville, two teams that will never play each other, right. but both can gain a lot from that game. Without a doubt, and, and- – and again, you know, we're just getting to that part of the season now. It's halfway through the high school seasons where everybody's starting um, now to think about the playoffs and where they're going to be seated, where they're situated. You know who your kids are. You know you know what your team looks like. You know what their strengths are and you know what their weaknesses are. And this is a time of year, especially during spring break, where you really should be working on those. And then the last game of the weekend, we have Mount Sinai, Sacred Heart of Long Island. Two, two Long Island teams. We don't normally do it, like we said, but... Listen, they will never obviously play again. And Mount Sinai, uh, Sacred Heart, two perennial powerhouses on Long Island clashing head-to-head, and and it should be a fun matchup. Well, I like this game. You know, Sacred Heart played St. Anthony's real tough um, last week or or two weeks ago when they played each other. Yeah, it was was a great game. Mount Sinai is a team. You know, they have a new coaching staff this year. Um, And, and again, I know both the coaches really well. They're wonderful. And, And this is a team that's 
trying to get their way back to where they were. You know, this was Mount Sinai. You would always talk about them before the season started as, you know, either defending state champions or the number one team, you know, going to states. They want to get back to that level. It's not going to be easy. You know, they, they play in a very difficult conference as well. But again, Sacred Heart is a team that's trying to beat the team that we just saw today in St. Anthony's. So they have to do their non-league games also at a much higher caliber. Yeah, I think uh, it was 2018 Sacred Heart beats St. Anthony's for the title. And other than that, it's, it's been a struggle every year to, to beat the Friars. I mean, they're, they're nationally ranked. They're, they're great. They've got great players that go on to the next level. It's just that St. Anthony's hump that they can't seem to get over year after year. So uh, Mount Sinai... While they're not maybe not St. Anthony's, it's a good test. It's a formidable component opponent, without a doubt. It's a well-coached team. Mm-hmm. It's a team that understands the championship mentality, and those are the teams that you have to play if you want to get to that level. If there's anyone who knows about championship mentality, it's this one right here. 2009, number one team in America, three state championships. I mean, no one has more of a championship mentality <laughs> than Tracy. Thank All you. right, so. Games for Brains, Saturday and Sunday. If you don't know what it's about, we make uh, we raise money for the Making Headway Foundation, which helps kids with brain and spinal cord tumors. We've been doing it for, like I said, this is now the sixth year. We've raised close to $70,000. So all the money raised goes to that great foundation. So come on out. Watch it on Varsity Media. If you can't make it out, make a donation. We have a website. We'll put the website up there. Come on out. My wife bakes, right? You know That's about that. That's the best that. part of the day is seeing Andy's wife. My, I mean, without a doubt. <laughs> and my son will be out there this year. <laughs> my wife makes, uh, has a huge bake sale. It'll be at both schools. So you come on over to the tent. Believe me, she's a great cook. Come on out. Check that out. See some great lacrosse. And you'll get to see us too. What's better than that? Correct. All right, Trace. <laughs> this is fun. Let's do it again. Absolutely. Whenever you're ready. But again, for anybody watching this, it's, it's just such a great cause. And I hope that everybody comes out. I hope it's beautiful weather for us. And uh, just a great promotion of not only of of your organization, but of Girls Across. Of Girls Across, absolutely. All right, we will see you at the games beginning Saturday.